good afternoon. So glad that you could make it. Um, first, I want to thank the American Migraine Foundation for the opportunity to discuss navigating uh, uh, the cost of care today. So uh, this is the second presentation in a three-part series uh, for Facebook Live about patient access. And uh, the cost of care is definitely a timely topic. Uh, we are still fresh in the new year, and some of us may have felt uh, a little bit of a shift in our health expenses with the new year. You may have found that your medications or procedures or lab work is hitting your wallet a little harder these days uh, with your deductible maybe resetting. So first I wanna uh, introduce myself. My name is Emily Brown. I am the Patient Education Content and Project Manager at Patient Advocate Foundation. Uh, PAF is a national 501c3 organization uh, and we offer case management services as well as financial aid to people who have chronic debilitating and life-threatening illnesses. And we were founded in 1996 and since that time, we've been able to serve 1.3 million people uh, with our services and help them navigate the healthcare system. So I have been at PAF for six and a half years now, and five of those I spent as a case manager. And during that time, I was helping people one-on-one -on -one manage their healthcare costs and help them kind of work through in, uh, any insurance barriers they were facing. So getting into today's topic, again, we're talking about navigating the cost of care. Um, really, it is human nature to want the most value for our money. And that's true no matter what <laughs> you are buying, whether that's groceries, a new car, your cable bill, whatever it might be. But I feel it's especially true with healthcare services. So, um, the good news is that there are some ways to stretch your money where healthcare is concerned. So we're gonna go through those tips today. Um, just talking a little bit about negotiating, about comparison between providers, and that's before you receive care as well as after. And whether you are uninsured or whether you are just trying to navigate and control your costs, your out-of-pocket costs with insurance, um, hopefully some of these tips will be able to help you manage some of those healthcare related expenses. So let's get into it and look a little bit at how we can manage some of those costs. Uh, the first tip we're gonna look at today is just to familiarize yourself with common insurance terms. There are a lot of jargon, a lot of uh, unfamiliar words that comes along with insurance and healthcare in general. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, you're doing yourself a disservice, basically, if you don't know the basics of your insurance plan. And my recommendation is really to get familiar with some of those terms, learn what the words of your insurance plan mean and how your plan is designed. And that will give you, um, that will really just help you understand what you're paying for as well. So some of the big terms are gonna be deductible. That your deductible is the amount that you are going to pay before your health insurance kicks in. So for example, if you have a $2,000 deductible, you're gonna to need to pay $2,000 before your health insurance starts contributing towards the cost of your care and paying their portion. However, during this time, you are still benefiting from having insurance because you're gonna pay the negotiated rate that your insurance company has uh, worked out with the provider. And uh, even though it does feel like, oh man, these, these are huge charges, you are still paying less than you would if you were uninsured, just because you are benefiting from the negotiation that happened before you bought your insurance plan. Um, another big term that's important to know is copay. You've probably heard a lot of these terms before, but I just want to do a quick refresher um, again so that everyone's familiar before we dive a little deeper. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a copay is going to be the amount that you pay. It's a fixed amount for a healthcare service. So whether that's paying $25 whenever you go to 
uh, the, your primary care doctor or maybe 40 or 50 when you go to see a specialist, it's just gonna be the set amount that you pay that corresponds to the health service that you're getting. Coinsurance is another term that kind of goes hand in hand with copay, um, and it's mostly the same other than the fact that coinsurance means you're paying a percentage of the charges versus just a fixed amount. So if you have a procedure, say for example, you pay 30%, your insurance is gonna pick up the other 70% of the rate that was negotiated between the provider and your insurance company. The last big uh, term that's important to know is going to be in-network versus out-of-network. And in-network refers to providers, uh, labs, pharmacies, uh, clinics, any of those type of providers that are covered by your insurance. And out-of-network means that there is limited or no coverage for those providers through your plan. Uh, and basically, health plans contract with specific groups of providers for group discounts. So other providers that are outside of that group are not going to be part of that contract and they're going to be technically out of network. So they will have different coverage rates, meaning you will most likely end up paying full retail cost for procedures or care that you receive for those providers where you would receive a negotiated rate uh, through an in-network provider. So that brings us to our second tip, which is to use in-network providers when at all possible. Um, utilizing in-network providers, again, facilities, pharmacies, labs, that is going to help you lower cost. Uh, and you, there are several ways to find in-network providers. You can either do a search on your uh, health plans online member portal, or you can call your plan directly. I would just offer a tip if you do plan to call that uh, you take notes with the call of the date you called, the time, who you spoke with, uh, and then obviously, you know, a list of providers they give you, as well as if they can offer a reference number for the call just so you can refer back to that later if you need it. Um, and I would say as well, once you do have that list of in-network providers from your health plan, it's like it's a good idea to just double check with the provider that they still are in-network. Um, there's been situations and cases where uh, you call to make an appointment, you think everything's okay, but then it turns out the list the insurance company gave you maybe was outdated. That provider's not in the list of network in-network uh, covered providers, and then you're back to square one. So we don't want that. So when you do call to make your appointment, it's best to just double check and make sure that provider is still in network. Um, and something to remember too, the language you use is important. So it's, it's good for you to ask whether or not the provider is contracted with your insurance company, not just if they accept it. Um, so our third tip for pre-service savings uh, would be to shop around for any non-emergency care that you need. Obviously, if it isn't an emergency, you're going to want to make your way to the nearest emergency room, regardless of in-network or out-of-network. Um, but for non-emergency care, if your provider has uh, prescribed procedure or testing, ask the billing clerk at his or her office for a procedure code as well as a cost estimate. Your health plan might be able to offer you some other facilities or providers in the area that could save you money that could be cheaper. Um, or you can contact them yourself and try to find out you know, the, the price difference between that office or facility and then the one that you were originally thinking uh, or considering. The last tip I'll offer for pre-service savings is gonna to be to use online comparison tools. There are several different ways you can compare what the charges are gonna be if you have gotten a prescribed uh, service or test. And a couple that I'll shout out is there's a good one called Hospital Cost Compare. You can reach them uh, online. It's hospital, hospitalcostcompare.com. And another one is Healthcare Blue Book. 
and their healthcarebluebook.com. Those are both good resources, very user-friendly, where you can compare the cost of different, uh, different facilities in your area and get a good idea of, of, the, of the typical cost for the care you were prescribed. Um, as well, many insurance companies also offer cost comparison tools on their member portal, so that's something to think about as well. So moving into tips for uh, after you've gotten the service or treatment, um, I would say the most important one is to not pay anything on your bill until you get your explanation of benefits document. Um, sometimes it's called an EOB or a health summary or a charge summary. There's a lot of different names. Basically, it all means the same thing. Um, an EOB is just a statement that you will receive after every healthcare interaction, um, whether that's an office visit, lab work, testing, um, any health interaction will generate an explanation of benefits document. In that document, you're gonna see the amount that was paid by the insurance company, the amount they did not pay, um, what your financial responsibility is gonna be, as well as, any notes or codes if, for instance, something was denied by your insurance company. Uh, and there may be times where your provider bills you before you get that EOB um, or before your insurance company even pays their portion uh, or before the charges are adjusted. So if for some reason there is a denial of services and your insurance company denies some of the care that you've gotten, but you've already paid for it, um, it just kind of adds another layer of confusion that nobody needs. So if you wait until you get that explanation of benefits, typically it does not take very long to get them, um, usually within 30 to 45 days, then you can compare what your insurance company says you owe with what your provider actually billed you, and then you can you know, approach your provider or contact them if there's an, any discrepancy in what you should have been billed versus what you actually were. So another tip I'll offer is to ask your provider if there are any discounts if you pay timely or quickly. Um, so sometimes facilities or providers will offer you a discount if you pay at the time you receive the service or within the first uh, billing cycle before the bill is actually due. So if you have a high balance, try to offer them maybe half of what's actually due. And lots of times facilities or providers are willing to negotiate with you and work that way because um, they're eager to collect something and to bring revenue into the office um, versus going through a lengthy collection process. It's more administrative work and um, and cost to their office to have to bill you three, four times. So if you pay even a portion upfront and they're willing to accept it, um, that's gonna be more, less administrative burden for their office and a cost savings for you. Um, so you'll be paying, you know, potentially a large chunk at once, but ultimately you'll save uh, on the cost of your services. So another important uh, detail and tip is to not forget to inquire about financial assistance options that might be available through your facility or provider. So as part of the Affordable Care Act, all nonprofit facilities are required to offer some type of financial assistance program to its patients. So lots of times facilities um, don't tell you if you might be eligible or they don't advertise their programs, um, but just make sure that you're asking the questions about what kind of assistance might be offered by the facilities or else you'll lose out on those cost savings. Um, typically facility discounts are based on your income and assets and I've seen them range anywhere from like 10% of the charges up to a full complete write-off of the bill, meaning there's no charges uh, that you'll have to pay. So normally there's an application process for those kinds of uh, programs and you'll have to typically fill out the application as well as 
provide income documents, um, maybe bank statements, um, so that they're able to process what you're eligible for. However, uh, programs are not only for people who have low income. Lots of times facilities can look at what kind of assistance they can offer based on kind of the debt that's owed to the facility versus what your income is. So even if you have a healthy income, say your family is making $100,000 a year, but you have twenty or $25,000 that you owe to the facility, say for a procedure, um, you, there's a good chance you could still qualify for assistance just based on the ratio of debt to what your income is. So even if it doesn't look at first like you may be eligible, um, it's worth it to still apply, uh, even if the guidelines don't look like they're in your favor. Another tip is to use peer pressure to your advantage. <laughs> we don't often think about peer pressure as a good thing, <laughs> but in this case, it can be. So if you have already done your financial assistance application and you did get a discount or you know some kind of financial assistance or write-off with a provider, be sure to mention it when you call uh, to your other providers to find out if there's financial aid. So for instance, if you were to get a surgery, you're gonna owe at minimum charges from the facility, charges from your surgeon, and charges from an anesthesiologist. So you put in your application with the hospital, you're approved for 50% of your charges. And you call to the surgeon's office to find out if there's any kind of financial aid available through their office and the office tells you, ah, actually, we don't have a formal program or we don't have any kind of financial assistance that we typically offer. If you mention that you have done a financial aid application, you've gotten 50% off of your bill with the hospital, there's a good chance that the surgeon's office may, can, may extend the same discount to you because you've already done the work with someone else and they've already determined that your income or your debt to income ratio qualifies for assistance. So um, again, just make sure that you're doing any kind of financial aid application you can and you share those details uh, so you can hopefully get more um, off any other bills you owe. The last one is to inquire about a payment plan. So if the provider isn't able to offer you a discount or any kind of write-off, there may still be an option for an interest-free payment plan um, that won't break your budget, hopefully. And utilizing this strategy does leave you with the opportunity to renegotiate down the road. So if there's a time where you hit a hard financial you know, time in your life or your family's life, you can go back to that provider and say, hey, I have been really consistent with these payments. I've paid every month for a year on time. Is there anything you can do for me? And in some cases, the facility or the provider is able to just at that point, accept the payment that you've previously made in full and hopefully knock off the rest of your charges. So, um, so that's a tip as well. And something that may seem kind of self-explanatory, uh, but I still feel like needs to be mentioned is don't agree to a payment plan that you can't afford. Sometimes when you get on the phone with the provider, sometimes they can be pushy. Hospitals want the money that they're owed. Uh, so don't let them intimidate you and don't agree to something that you can't afford or is gonna make your monthly budget really tight. So just ask if there's any way that the charges can be extended and maybe you can pay less monthly over a longer period of time. So shifting over a little bit to uh, saving money on medications, I know that medications are a big part of migraine and headache care and this can be a big stressor but it can also be a savings opportunity. So um, the first thing I'll mention is to understand your plan design before you buy health insurance. I did um, a Facebook Live event 
on the AMF website back in October, or the AMF Facebook, excuse me, back in October, all about the best tips for buying insurance. So if you want tips when your open enrollment comes up, go back and refer to that Facebook Live because I feel like there were some pretty good tips in there. Um, but really, I spoke at that point just about the importance of knowing what kind of plan you're purchasing and the cost of care really tie into the design of your health plan. And if you don't know what kind of plan that you, you're buying, it's a lot easier to get surprised at the pharmacy. Um, but if you do your research before you buy, then there's, there's a better chance of you understanding what's covered under your plan, what medications are on the drug list of your plan, um, and how they are covered, just so there's not so many unknowns. And lots of times there are patient uh, prescription assistance programs that help you lower costs on medications. And these programs are sponsored by the manufacturers, uh, the pharmaceutical companies who actually make the drugs. And they come in handy for people who are uninsured or what we call underinsured, basically people who have insurance but still are struggling with the cost of uh, their care. So generally, they require people to complete an application process and they consider your household income as well as how many people live in your home. And usually there's other parts of the application, um, other factors based on which program you're applying for. As well, they are, there are independent co-payment assistance programs that help you uh, that help pay for medications. And these programs are administered, like I said, by independent charities, so not necessarily affiliated with the manufacturers of the drugs. Um, and they also typically have uh, application process uh, that's based on income and household size. And in order to find these programs, there is a wonderful website called Needy Meds, it's N-E-E-D-Y-M-E-D-S.com. Um, this is a great website that I referred to frequently when I was doing case management work. Uh, the site lets you search based on what your medication is and they will show you all of the available coupons, discount programs, uh, pharmaceutical assistance programs, copay, uh, independent copay charities. Um, it will show all of those potential opportunities for savings. and. It, as well, it also has the guidelines on there so you can kind of quickly see what you're eligible for. And my last tip as far as medications go is to shop around. Um, some pharmacy, or since pharmacies don't post their prices, uh, you may not realize how much prices can vary between pharmacies, even in the same area or location. Um, there's a wide variety in what prescription costs uh, in prescription drug prices, including brand and generic. And depending on where you shop, it could mean a lot of cost savings to you. So there is another website. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of websites out there today, but there's another great website called goodrx.com. And... Uh, that site lets you find the retail price of any medication at different pharmacies. So you don't have to go pharmacy to pharmacy or make a lot of calls. You can put your medication in on that website and then you can see based on your geographic area how what the retail cost is at each different pharmacy so you kind of can make some financial choices based on that. So that was my last tip as far as medications concerned and thinking about paying for medical care is overwhelming that's for sure um, but there is help available to you if you need it um, there's a couple things with NPAF that we uh, we can help with the first is self-guided so we uh, we maintain a directory called the National Financial Resource Directory and this is a really cool searchable tool that lets you put in your age, your location, your diagnosis, and what assistance you're looking for and then based on the 
based on what you put into the search tool, it will provide you a list of vetted resources that we have contacted and researched ourselves so we know it's legitimate. Um, and then you can look and see if there's any assistance available through those resources. So it just kind of narrows down um, sometimes the overwhelming number of charities and help that can be out there. So if cost of care is something that you are struggling with, there are several categories within the tool that you can kind of look at. And uh, there are affordable options for care, co-payment assistance, other medication assistance, medical bills and general financial help, and drug manufacturer patient programs. And you can reach the National Financial Resource Directory by going to our website, and that is patientadvocate.org slash financial, and you can use the tool there. As well, the Patient Advocate Foundation has case managers available for free who can assist with negotiating your medical uh, bills, and they can offer one-on-one -on -one help with navigating the cost. Um, if you would like to contact Patient Advocate Foundation for our case management program, uh, you can reach us at 866-688-3625 or migraine.pafcareline.org if you need help. So um, hopefully this was beneficial to you and you learned a little bit today. I did just want to remind everyone that we have our final Facebook Live uh, in our joint patient access series next month on March 4th, and we're going to be going over uh, disability basics. So be sure to tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern, March 4th, to learn more um, if you have questions about disability. So thanks everyone for your time, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!